Hey guys, it's Gardner, your friendly neighborhood developer advocate with Linode. Uh, today, we're gonna set up a Nextcloud instance using uh, our one-click marketplace. This is the best and easiest way to set up a Nextcloud instance on Linode. We're also gonna talk about how to configure S3 compatible object storage on your server. By setting up object storage on your Nextcloud server, you're actually gonna be able to get the best bang for the buck when it comes to storage space. Uh, you're not gonna have to worry about running out of space on your Linode uh, based on the service or the plan that you have, you're actually gonna have object storage. That's a huge game changer in my opinion. This configuration also separates your content from your actual Linode. So if your instance ever goes down for whatever reason, you still have access to your S3 bucket. That's a pretty awesome benefit. Before we get started, we're gonna need a couple things. So let's go over this. So first, you're gonna to wanna to sign in or create your Linode account. Then you wanna create an API token and you can generate one by clicking here, clicking my profile, API tokens, and then add a personal access token. Give it a label, uh, something descriptive so you know what it's for. Let's say next cloud developer advocate to demo token. You can never be too verbose. And then you wanna go ahead and click on read write for domains and hit create. Don't lose this number. If you close this, you'll never be able to get that back again. You'll have to generate a new token. And then you wanna make sure that object storage is enabled for your account. So you'll wanna go over to accounts, settings, and then enable it under object storage. I already have it enabled on my account. And you'll also wanna make sure that you have a domain name available. Uh, you don't have to have a domain name. We'll go over that in a minute. All right, from here, you'll wanna to go to marketplace here on the left, click on one click if it's not selected, and then go ahead and click next cloud. And we'll go through the process real fast here. You wanna create a password for your database. Again, you'll wanna remember this, so write it down, cause you'll need this later. And you wanna make sure that you have a good strong password here as well. Now, you'll see on the screen, it's gonna say optional. Uh, until that goes away, all these steps are going to be completely optional for you. Personally, I would recommend most of these steps. So under the limited pseudo user, uh, you're gonna want to create a username and give it a strong password. Now, if you don't have a uh, an SSH key, you'll want to go ahead and actually create one. You can do that by opening your terminal and you can type in SSH keygen and then uh, tell it what you wanna name it as. Uh, so we'll just call this uh, next cloud demo. Uh, I would recommend giving it a password and then you're done. So now what you wanna do is type cat nextcloud-demo.pub and you'll wanna copy that right into the SSH key field. And obviously if you gave it a different name than nextcloud demo, uh, you'll wanna give it, you wanna use the name that you actually gave it. All right, then go ahead and enter your API token here. So here for the domain name, you wanna enter the domain name that you'll be using. Um, if you're not going to be using a domain name, you can leave this blank and you can access your next cloud instance through the Linode's IP address, which we'll show you how to get to in a moment. For, the, for this domain name, we'll just do uh, clouddemo.heavyelement.io, which is a domain that I already own. Email address, let's just do uh, account at heavy element that I own. For uh, certbot SSL, uh, you can answer yes here. I would recommend doing that unless you are gonna configure SSL yourself some other way. Um, for me, that's the simplest way to do it. I just click yes. I believe you're gonna need a domain uh, to, to get that to work though. So here for select an image, Debian 10 is the only uh, distro that's supported with this one click app. That's fine. For the most part, you're just gonna be using Nextcloud itself. So I just leave that as is. For the region, I'm in the uh, Northeast United States. So I'm going to pick the Linode that is closest to me and that would be Newark, New Jersey. Picking a data center that's closest to you will reduce uh, network latency. Now for Linode plan, this is where things get interesting. Uh, you can go ahead and click Linode one gigabyte. Nextcloud's documentation says that you only need 512 megabytes of RAM uh, in order to run Nextcloud efficiently. Since our documentation recommends a one gigabyte Linode, that's all I think you might need, unless you plan on doing something like resource intensive uh, where you are installing a bunch of plugins in Nextcloud. Um, personally, I could see it being uh, within reason to get the two gigabyte Linode plan. But, 
but because we're doing object storage in this tutorial, uh, the one gigabyte Linode should be sufficient. And uh, you, won't, you won't actually end up using a quarter of this for your next cloud install because we're going to be doing object storage. Now you're going to want to give your Linode a good label. A good label can never be uh, too far away. Linode cloud storage demo. Give it a root password. And you can give it uh, any uh, SSH keys that you have uh, stored with your Linode account as well. You can enable backups for an extra $2 a month, which I would recommend doing. And you can also get a private IP address. Uh, but now you're ready to actually create your Linode. So let's go ahead and do that. Now you'll notice that it will take just a few minutes to get your Linode provisioned and booting. The one-click install scripts will run. It'll take generally between two to five minutes. Once this process has completely finished, you'll want to grab your IP address from here or your uh, domain name that you configured earlier. So from here, just go ahead and select your IP address, open a new tab, and type that baby in right there. Now we're at our configuration screen. This is how we start Nextcloud properly. So the first thing you want to do on this screen is go ahead and type in a user account name that you're going to use. Um, I usually go by G. Bryant because that's my name. And you go ahead and type in a secure password. All right. If you want to change this, you can. I would recommend leaving it the way it is. So then you want to type in your database information. The database user is Nextcloud, unless you changed it. The password is going to be whatever you set for your password. Database name can be Nextcloud. And then uh, you can also check whether you want to install recommended apps. Most of them are pretty useful, so I would go ahead and do that. And then click Finish. It's going to take a second and set up the database, get everything configured for you on Nextcloud. It takes a second. There we go. Now we're going to install all of the recommended applications. It's kind of hard to see that spinny little uh, loading icon, but it's there. And all right, once that's finished, it's going to log you in automatically. You can skip through this here, or you can just close it. All right, so now we're all set up with Nextcloud. Let's go ahead and install the things that we're going to need to enable external storage support. So click on the little gear up here and, cl and click on the apps section. And then you're going to want to click on the search and type in external storage support. This first result here, external storage support, you want to click enable on that. Now that it's enabled, we can go into the settings. And then under administration, we're going to go to external storages and we're going to uh, start the process. So the first thing that we're going to type in here is the folder name. This is where uh, we're going to put documents and files that we want to put on the uh, object storage. Uh, that's the folder name. So we're, we'll call this uh, bucket. Why not? <laughs> And then we're going to choose Amazon S3. For authentication, make sure it's set to access key. It looks like that's the only option here. For the bucket, we're going to have to create a uh, unique bucket name. Uh, it cannot already exist on the node's server. If it does, it's going to cr have an error. It's going to cause an error. Uh, so let's go ahead and pick a unique bucket name because it's got to be unique. Depending on where you want your Linode bucket to be located, uh, you're going to want to choose a host name from the table that's on screen right now. We're going to end up going with the US East uh, 1. Uh, we're going to put in the port, which is 443. We're going to do region ID, which is US East 1. The region ID needs to correspond with the, uh, with the host name. You must enable SSL in order for this to work, and you need to leave these other two unchecked. And finally, in the Linode Cloud Manager, we're going to actually have to enable uh, object storage. I already have it enabled. So what we'll have to do is go to object storage, access keys, and then create a new access key. Give it a label. Uh, so, so just object storage demo, click submit, and it will generate an access key and a secret key. Put in the access key, and then we're going to put in the secret key here. Boom. And then we're going to make sure that uh, it's available for uh, whatever users we want to enable it for. Uh, I'm just going to give it to myself. <laughs> and then we're going to click this little checkbox. Once we click save, 
assuming everything goes correctly, we're going to get this little checkbox here. Now, we're done with that. So if we click on our files, look, we have bucket now. Bucket has a little icon there because that's an external storage. So if we click on that and we drop our files in here, it's actually going to be synchronized to our S3 bucket. How awesome is that? So yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, I wanted to share that with you guys and I'm glad that you're here uh, checking out Linode's channel. If you want more tutorials just like this one, make sure you subscribe to the Linode YouTube channel. Uh, I've been your developer advocate, Gardner, and I'll see you guys later.